I find that 20 millimeters on full frame is sort of the Goldilocks focal length of ultra wide angle photography. I think when we compare it to say 24 millimeters, I think 24 millimeters tends to be a little bit boring and doesn't really give you the ability to play with perspective distortion as much as a 20 millimeter lens does. It just kind of feels a bit standard to me. And then when we go all the way down to 16 millimeters, that gets so crazy wide that it distorts everything to the point of it doesn't look very natural. So 20 millimeters sitting right in the middle of that allows you to take some really epic ultra wide angle shots with sort of wrap around scenes, but still people in the scene can look reasonably standard, not too much facial distortion depending on where you position people in the scene. So it's an ultra wide angle lens that can still take photos that don't look crazy distorted. And 20 millimeters gives you just enough of that perspective distortion so you can frame things up and create some really compelling images. And in ultra wide angle lenses, perspective distortion is the relationship between those things that are closer to the lens and those things that are further away from the lens. So in ultra wide angle lenses, the things that are closer to the lens look bigger and actually much closer to the lens than they might actually be in comparison to those background elements. So it may makes those foreground elements seem bigger in relation to the background. Now, if you are using like a telephoto or a zoom lens or a standard lens, that sort of evens things out. So the more telephoto you get, the more that the thing in the foreground and the thing in the background look very similar in size. So for me, 20 millimeters gives me just enough of that perspective distortion to really, really play with my images. And I think it is absolutely the sweet spot when it comes to playing with perspective distortion. And when you find yourself either in tight spaces or in closed spaces, whether they be big or small, it does still allow you to capture a sort of wrap around image. So you get this sort of surreal view of the world that you can only get with an ultra wide angle lens where you've just got this complete compelling wrap around image. The other thing that all ultra wide angle lenses do is they challenge your photography skills and your ability to compose photos. And that's because the wider the lens, the more you get in the scene, the more things that are in the scene, the more things there are to think about as far as how you're gonna compose that image. You know, what's gonna be in the frame, what's not gonna be in the frame? Are we gonna be able to keep those edges of frame clean to make the best possible photograph? How are all the elements in the scene going to relate to each other? Are we going to have them overlapping or are we going to move to create space between those elements? So the wider the lens, the more you have to think about all those things. And for me, 20 millimeters, it challenges you just enough to really make you think about your photography and your composition and help make you a better photographer. But it isn't so crazy wide that you find it almost impossible to compose a moving, moving image and you find it completely overwhelming just dealing with all these different elements in the scene. The other thing that this is quite useful for is vlogging and travel video. Uh, there's a few things that this does. First of all, if you are vlogging, turning it on yourself, you're gonna get yourself and you're not gonna get too much distortion of your face in the scene, but you still get that wraparound image where you really see everything that's going on around you. The other thing is when you turn it and you're not shooting yourself and you're shooting away from yourself, you get that fully wraparound immersive image. So whether you're sort of walking down a street and you're sort of trying to capture a moving or tracking shot, you're going to get the city and you're gonna feel it wrap around you as you you move through the scene with a 20 millimeter lens like this. And because of the f1 point aperture, it's also going to be a great lens in low light. So if you're carrying around like a standard a zoom, like a 24 to 70 or a 28 to 75 or something like that, you can actually use this as part of a two lens kit. And this can be both your wide angle lens and your low light lens. Now, when we look at the image quality that you're going to get out of this lens, this is about as good as it's going to get, particularly at the sub $1,000 price point. And that's because this lens really has no major optical flaws whatsoever. When it comes to distortion, of course, when you put it on a Sony camera, there's going to be in-camera corrections and the image is going to look perfect. But even when you shoot raw and you turn off those in-camera corrections, what you're gonna find is just the most modest amount of mustache distortion across the top of the frame. Now, this isn't even noticeable unless you're shooting basically a test chart and looking for it. In any real world situation, you won't even notice 
notice it. And if you are using in-camera corrections, you won't notice it either. So optically, even without that digital processing, the, the performance of this lens when it comes to distortion is almost perfect. Now, the one place that this lens does exhibit a little bit of an optical flaw is vignette. It does have a bit more vignette than some other lenses out there. It's certainly not awful and it's got a good gradient and you can use in-camera corrections or your sort of presets in Lightroom to sort of get rid of that. But it is the one little place that I think some people might pick up on and say there is a bit of an issue with this lens. For me, it's not a problem because I actually add vignette to a lot of my photos. Also, if I'm shooting something like landscape where I really want sort of everything to be bright and sort of have the same exposure across the frame, I'm actually going to be shooting at f8, f9, f11 anyways. And when you are shooting at those levels, there's little to no vignette. So I think for me, it is a non-issue, but it's the one thing that you might be able to pick up on and be critical of this lens. Now, even though this is an ultra wide angle lens and in general, wide angle lenses are hard to get background blur on because this lens can focus so close and because it does have an f1.8 aperture, you can get a nice out of focus area, which is not always the case for ultra wide angle lenses like this. And the other thing I will say, and very important to me, even more important than sharpness and detail in most of the lenses that I use is the quality of that background blur. So if you are trying to achieve a blurry background, you definitely want a situation where that background is sort of, uh, sort of creamy and smooth and just looks like a nice backdrop to the thing that's sharp in detail and in focus in your frame. And this renders background blur, which is just about as good as anything out there. I could not say enough good things about the background blur or the bokeh out of this lens. Now, one of the other things you will notice if you are using this lens with a camera which has in-body image stabilization, we know as we get to those wider focal lengths, we tend to have these issues with wobbling in the corners. This kind of defeats the whole purpose of the whole thing, and it actually makes that image, in my mind, unusable, at least specifically for video. What I've found is on these Sony cameras, 20 millimeters is about as wide as you can go and not get that corner, corner wobble. So if you are walking around, if you are shooting handheld video, you've got a camera which has IBIS, you aren't going to get the corner wobble when using this lens, which I think is actually quite a big deal. The nano coating on this lens means that you get very good resistance to ghosting and flaring when shooting into the light. And I actually use a filter on this lens when I'm sort of out in the wild. And even with that filter on, I really don't have too many problems. And I do think if you're like me, if you're a travel video and travel photo shooter and you're sort of out in the wild and roaming the city and going to beaches and things like this, I do recommend getting a filter for this lens. And on the filter that I use on it, actually I'll link in the description down below. Previously, I did a whole range of tests on about 10 different filters. And I actually found a really budget friendly uh, filter uh, and it actually turned out to be one of the cheaper filters out there that performed as good as $100, $150 filters. So that's what I'm using on this. And I will link that in the description down below. If you do buy the lens, I do strongly recommend that you do buy a protective filter. Now, one of the other unique features about this lens is it's close focus distance. You can focus down to seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters, and you are going to get an incredibly sharp and detailed photo. And if you want to sort of blur out that background with the F1.8 and that really close focus, you can really isolate your subject, blow out that background and create this really surreal looking image. If you stop the aperture down, you can actually have a really deep depth of field and deep depth of focus, and you can actually set the scene and have quite a good idea of what that subject is and just feel the whole world and everything off in the distance sort of wrapping in around it. So I really, really love close focus on wide angle lenses like this and this one does an excellent job of it. I also think this is a super versatile lens that you can actually shoot in APS-C mode and get a 30 millimeter equivalent or just use it on an APS-C camera and get the 30 millimeter equivalent. So 20 millimeters is really interesting and versatile on full frame, but sort of equally, once you put that into crop mode or use it on a crop sensor camera, 30 millimeters, although it's very different than 50 millimeters, is right in that perfect standard 
100 sort of photography range, sort of all purpose walk around street photography, street video, or even sort of portraits if you're talking sort of head to waist or full body. That 30 millimeters actually works out really, really nice for that. And with the f1.8, you still have the ability to blur out that background. Looking at the build quality on this lens, it's pretty much standard for sort of the new Sony lenses we're seeing out there. It's a very high quality plastic body. This one is very interesting in the fact that it does have the aperture ring, which a number of the new Sony lenses have, but it also has the ability to take that and turn it into a clicked or de-clicked aperture ring just by turning this on off switch. And I really, I mean, I love clicked aperture rings. I leave it in the clicked all the time and it really has a very satisfying click. And if you just want to turn everything back over to the camera, you put it in that click mode and then you turn it to A and there's a nice solid clunk there and it is not coming out if you want to leave it in A mode. Now that will either let the camera take care of it or you can put it in automatic mode if you're using a fully automatic mode, but this just turns the control back over to your camera. But I actually prefer to use the aperture ring at, to control the aperture. Mind you, I've come from Fuji cameras, so that is kind of part of where my mind is. But yeah, I really do like the aperture ring. The other thing is it has a very smooth focus ring and the focus is linear. That means that you can actually repeat your focus pulls. So if you're shooting video, you can focus and you know roughly how far it is between the two points if you sort of tested the focus and you're gonna be able to repeat that focus as much as you need because it is a linear focus throw. The other thing the lens has, it has an AF-MF switch. So if you're just sitting there shooting, maybe you're shooting in a scene where it's just sort of a locked off shot, you can just focus it, get it in focus, switch it to manual focus, and now it's locked on, it's not gonna go anywhere. If you want to just lock your focus while you're focusing on something just temporarily, just above the AMFF MF switch, uh, autofocus, manual focus switch, is this little button. You push this button and this will lock your focus for the time that you're pushing this button. In addition to that, this button can actually be programmed to do a number of other different things just in the camera. You just program it to whatever function you want. So it is a programmable button, but out of the package, it comes as a AF autofocus hold switch. It just locks your autofocus or locks your focus in the position it's in once you push the button. The other thing that's great about this lens, and particularly given it's probably gonna be a pretty good sort of night photography lens, it can be an astrophotography lens, it can be a landscape lens, and that is the fact that it is moisture and dust resistant. That's gonna protect you if you're out in the elements, if you're out at a beach, if you got a lot of sand and grit and dirt or dust and debris on this lens, you're going to have some level of protection. Now, I wouldn't take it out in torrential rain. I don't even take my most weatherproof lenses out in torrential rain, but just know if you get caught out, you will have some level of protection. The other thing about this lens and being one of Sony's newer lenses is the fact that the autofocus is absolutely infallible. It is just a matter of pointing this lens wherever you want and you don't even have to think about it. It finds faces, it finds objects, it locks on objects. From a video perspective, not only does it find the things, it's almost like a mind reader how well it works with the Sony autofocus system. But beyond that, when it does decide to change focus from one point to another, it doesn't do that pulsy hunting thing that you see on some of the lenses, even some of the better G Master lenses. It actually does a nice sort of smooth pulse of focus between those different points. So from an autofocus perspective, I think it's the best Sony lens that I've used to date. And one of the lenses that people are gonna naturally compare this lens to is the G Master 24 1.4. And as I said early in the video, you are first of all getting a lens that is about $500 cheaper. It is still got weather resistance. In addition to that, I think 24 millimeters is actually kind of a boring focal length. I think 20 millimeters is much, much more interesting. The other thing is you do get that 24, if you are shooting at one of the 24 to 70 G Master lenses, you've already covered that 24 in that 24 to 70. So by getting a 20 millimeter, you are actually not overlapping that 24 to 70 range. You've got that for 24 to 70, and then you can carry this around as your sort of all purpose ultra wide lens. So I think it is a more interesting lens, and I think in a lot of ways, it's a more versatile lens than the 24 millimeter, in addition to being smaller, lighter, and having optical performance, which is equal to that 24 millimeter G Master lens. The other lens that people might not compare this lens to, but I think you should be, is the 16 to 35 G Master lens, because this 20 millimeters falls right in the middle of that 
ultra wide focal range of that lens. So ultra wide starts at 24 and then that lens goes down to 16. That is the ultra wide portion of that lens. When we look at a standard zoom lens, which starts at 24, that 24 goes from 24 to 70, that's covering your standard zoom range. So you can right in the middle of that ultra wide 16 to 24 part of the range of the 16 to 35, replace that with this ultra wide angle lens. And first of all, when comparing these lenses, this is going to be a cheaper option. It's going to be a smaller option. It's going to be an option that is better in low light. And I think can be an alternative to that lens, particularly if you've already got a 24 to 70, which is already covering some of the same range as the 16 to 35. So carrying around that 24 to 70 and this 20 millimeter is a smaller, lighter, less expensive expensive setup, but it still gives you a really versatile coverage in that ultra wide angle lens. Plus you're going to have much, much better low light performance because this one's an F 1.8 lens. The other lenses this lens would pair really, really well with would be the uh, Tamron 28 to 75 or the Sigma 28 to 70. And those are both lenses that don't get down to that 24. Once again, those are around a thousand dollar lenses. Then you pick this one up for under a thousand dollars. Now you've got ultra wide to your entire standard zoom range covered for the most part for under $2,000 all up. That's a huge difference compared to getting two G Master lenses like the 16 to 35 and the 24 to 70. The other place I think you could use this lens is as an APS-C 30 millimeter equivalent sort of field of view. So if you've got something like the Tamron uh, 17 to 70, you've got that sort of really full sort of range covered from sort of very, very wide to moderate telephoto. You throw this in, this becomes your blurry background, low light, very versatile 30 millimeter equivalent, which sort of falls in the standard zoom range on that lens rather than the ultra wide angle sort of zoom range of what would be a full frame camera. So I think this could work well on like the FX30 or the ZV-E10 or the A6400 or 6600. I think any of those cameras would go really, really well with this. And if you're somebody that has both full frame and APS-C, I think this is a super versatile lens and kind of can do double duty going between those two different size sensors. Now having the right gear and buying the right lens for your purpose is only one way to improve your photography. But I've just thrown a video on screen now and I think this is the best tutorial I have ever done on photography and I think there are concepts in there that you will have never seen before. So if you watch that video, I virtually guarantee at the end of that video, you will be a better photographer than you are right now.